God bless you guys. God bless you all. This is Jordan Williams here with another video. So today I want to we're going to talk about five elements for your worship. I want to talk about five things that are crucial for you to really uh, elevate your worship. Okay. And these five things, I'm telling you, when you uh, utilize these five things, these will, you, this these things will take your sound to another level. Um, you know, playing in the anointed and playing with expression is very important. And I use these five elements in my playing um, all the time. I have to be conscious conscious of these things when I'm playing to really make the music effective, make it powerful, and make it where, you know, it really can uh, change lives and things of, of that nature. So let's talk about the, um, the first element. Now, before we go into these five steps, I want to talk about one step that is so crucial for you. That first step is preparation. You've got to have preparation um, in your music and in your practice. A preparation, you know, is very is key. So I want to talk about that. Preparation is key. And what is preparation? Preparation is just you know being prepared. Preparation is your um, your daily practice. You know, it's it's knowing your instrument. It's all these kind of things. So preparation is key as well to your success. Um, so I just want to let you know that even as you um, using these five steps, make sure that you practice, make sure you're prepared, right? Make sure that you know your instrument, right? And make sure that you know your um, your song, whatever you're gonna do. So let's say you're, you're playing in a church or you're playing at a concert, you're playing at a gig, um, whatever it is, know your material. And when you're able to know your material and, and know what you're doing, when you utilize these five steps, they're going to show you, you know, um, it will just take your playing to another level. So let's get into this. So the first step I always tell people, which is so crucial, is your tone. You know, you could be somebody who plays very simple, but if you had bad tone, you know, you're not going to get the greatest sound. So I want to demonstrate that to you. Now, I'm using a my keyboard here, which is a Casio Privia. Um, to me, it has some great sounds, but now let's say if I if I was to pick a certain sound, um, and if I'm playing worship piano, right? To me, this is not the greatest sound when it comes to worship piano, right? Or if I'm playing this. That, that tone is not too great, right? That might be like for honky-tonk music, right? Maybe that kind of style is a honky-tonk sound, but when we're playing worship, we got to know our tones. Our tone is very important. So that might not be the best tone. But now let's see if we go back to, I'm going to go back to my regular uh, acoustic piano grand. And I have a great tone there, right? It's a great sound, right? And even on this instrument, I can actually layer. I could have a nice pad over here, right? So I'll show you this real quick. It's a nice worshipy pad, you hear that? And even if I want, I can change it to a nice string. See, it's very, it's like really underlined in there. You hear that? So your tone is so crucial. Um, I'm sure you might have heard this in maybe some churches all the time that you might have got an instrument and the tone is just all over the place. You know, the tone is it's really harsh. Maybe it's a lot of distortion. Maybe, you know, there could be times where the, where the tone sounds like this. Watch your ears now. You hear that's distorted. It's too loud, right? So, you know, it's good to have a good volume, right? It's good to have a good volume. Have your tone together. Have a nice sound. Your tone is everything, right? So picking a great sound, you know, having a great instrument that you have invested in, you know, um, knowing the sounds to play for what you're playing, especially if I'm playing worship music, there are certain sounds I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be using some nice strings, maybe some pads, you know, a nice piano. I might even have a nice electric piano. You know, there's some sounds that I'm probably not gonna wanna use in certain music because the tone is just not gonna, uh, accompany what I'm doing. So, first one is tones. So I want you guys to, uh, you know, keep note of that. So that goes with sounds, right? 
That's your patches, right? Um, and that's even your instrument, you know? Having a good instrument has good tone is so crucial. Now let's go into step number two. Step number two, and you've heard a little bit of that when I did my tone, is dynamics. Dynamics are crucial. Now what are dynamics? Dynamics is basically the velocity that you're playing a, a sound. What do I mean by that? Velocity means the response, the touch. So I could, I play this very soft, right? I can play it very loud, right? I can play it soft, play it loud, I can play it medium. So there's different velocities I can hit. So when I'm, even when I'm playing certain changes, right? Soft, loud, medium, soft, right? Soft, right? I'm gonna go medium, 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 right? I'm gonna hit the keys a little harder, harder. I'm, I'm playing loud. Louder. Medium. So dynamics is very crucial because there'll be times you could be playing in a service or playing behind somebody, right? And let's say the, the speaker or the preacher, you know, they're really soft spoken and you're having to follow them. There gets a point where the, the speaker might be getting a message across and they start getting loud, right? You want to get louder with them, right? When the band starts coming in, he's maybe starts laying hands on people. You gotta bring in the presence, you know, you gotta start playing with power. You know, everything starts to subside, he comes down, you wanna come down. Right? So dynamics are are very crucial. So again, dynamics is the velocity. It's the velocity of how you're playing your notes. So it's loud, soft, medium. And if you guys want to understand more about this, you guys can download my five steps um, to elevate your worship from kingsworshipacademy.com. And there I break down those concepts. Okay? So let's go into step number three. Element number three is so crucial. It's tempo. Now what is tempo? Tempo is your timing. Tempo is your rhythm. Um, tempo is very key. Tempo, tempo is going to be uh, the thing that helps ground your playing. So, for example, let's say we are playing a, a song, right? Let's say we're playing a popular song like um, Bless the Lord. I, I, well, 10,000 Reasons. You guys know this, right? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, right? See that tempo? I'm playing at a certain speed, so I'm going to check it out. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, right? Now, could you imagine if the tempo is all over the place? Could you imagine the results that you're going to get? Could you imagine if I, if I make this tempo, this timing, very, very, very slow? Now, check this out. I'm going to give you an example. Just imagine I play it like this. I mean, it couldn't work, but if somebody's trying to sing the song and try to minister the song, it's going to be too slow, right? And could you imagine if I played it too fast? Check it out. Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. So what happens is you rush the song. You totally took the context out of the song, whether you pulled it back or whether you sped it up, you know, you you really lost the context of song. So it's very important that we um, we stay with the tempo. So here we go again. So if we're playing that song, we want to play it like, Bless the Lord, oh my soul. It's a good tempo, right? Oh my soul, right? Worship your holy name. Sing like never before, right? So 
has a good good tempo, right? So tempo is so crucial um, as your third step for worship. You know, keep that time and you know get a metronome. If you guys don't have a net metronome, um, go ahead to music store. Uh, that's how you spell it. If you want to check it out, go on Google. Type in metronome. Find yourself a metronome. Go to Sam Mash. Go to Guitar Center. Get yourself a metronome. Metronome is basically going to go. It's going to set a timer for you. You're going to play to that timer. Whether it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or something like one, two, three, one, two, three. You know, there, there are different times. You have five. You can have something like, you know, five, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. So there are different timers that, you know, you'll be able to practice with and really ground your playing. So you're playing with the right tempos, the right rhythms. And one more thing about tempo, you know, playing. Uh, and the right rhythm is very crucial because you see how I played, right? So I'm doing one. Watch, I'm doing a one, two, three, four, one, two. So if you notice what I'm when I'm playing my chords, I'm doing one and two, and three and four, and one and two, three and four. And so I'm playing it. I'm playing it on those um those eighth notes, right? So those eighth notes. Help give it the rhythm. So, uh, 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 uh. Now, can you imagine if I messed the rhythm up? I was like, <laughs> what happens is it's all over the place, right? Right. So you have to pick a proper timing and a proper proper rhythm, right? So your rhythm is everything. Your rhythm is gonna keep it grounded. And keep it where you can accompany uh, people properly. Okay, so that's our third step. Now, our fourth step, um, to me, this is one of the more advanced steps, but it's so crucial in sounding like a seasoned player. Placement. Now, what is placement? Placement is the ability to give your music space. It's the ability to place things in the proper, proper registers and the proper timing. In the, in the proper situations, you know, there are going to be different things as you grow as a player, you get better. There could be little different nuances that you can do that you're going to want to um, add to your music. Now, it's very crucial that you understand placement because if you don't understand placement, what will happen is two things. You'll either sound like a, a very beginner novice, which is fine when you're starting out, you know, because we're all learning. But when you, when you have played for a while, you know, you're going to want to grow and sound more seasoned right so if you um you don't want to sound like too much of a novice if you've been playing for a while the other thing is you don't want to sound like you're all over the place you want to sound together especially if you're playing with a band it's so crucial so let's 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 do this song one more time bless the lord right ten thousand reasons so if i'm playing this right now i could play this as i spoke to you before very novice right and this would be very novice Now that was good, right? It was nice, but it was very novice. But now, what happens if I play way too much, right? Now you're like, what am I doing, right? Where am I? Where am I? And could you imagine somebody trying to sing to that worship? Worship today, could you imagine? Could you imagine you trying to sing, Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship this Lord. And I've seen people play like this. So, might, so some of us might be like, Well, it's common sense. But I've seen people do this. It's unfortunate. But so I want to give you guys. And that's what I'm talking about. That's bad placement, right? It's poor placement. So we want to be able to keep our music uh, very uh, simple together, right? But it's like salt and pepper. I want you to think of I want you to think of your placement when you're doing your little tricks, you're doing your little things, you're doing 
the little things that you're throwing in that you're learning. You want it to be like salt and pepper. Now, you know, if you put too much salt or you put too much pepper in food, right, what's going to happen? It's going to really ruin the food, right? The food's going to get really nasty. You're not going to really eat it because it's too salty or it has way too much pepper, right? So it's the same thing with music. So we want to think about this. So we're playing this song. Here's, here's some plays with it. I can do this right here. You see that? And I go right. So I'm going to do it again. So it's a Now what I do, I just did a, I kind of did a, a G, right? I took a G, which is inverted. I inverted it here, right? And I just doubled. I doubled my top note and added the second right. Actually, I did a, a G, but I added the fourth C. So, That's right. So it's the Lord on my soul, oh my soul, right? Worship your whole name. I want a G. To my never before. See so now, that's good placement, right? So I was able to place the notes, uh, do those, I did that little trick and it sounded very nice, right? And the same thing about your register. I'm going to start a register here, right? So I want to play in a good register. Lord on oh my soul. I don't want to play up here. Oh, oh my soul. Worship your whole name, right? It sounds very amateur. Be playing up there. It might sound good in a, when a, when the when the moment is sweet or the moment is quiet, right? You just want to hear the voices. But when you're really in the song and you know you're really trying to lead the song and play it, you're gonna to want to play down here. You're gonna to want to play in your lower register. Even if you took your left hand and, and did the octaves, that's even fine here. See, I'm on that I'm on that F, right? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, right? G, oh my soul, A minor, right? See that? That's so. That is placement. So placement is so crucial, guys. So make sure that you're listening to what you're doing, especially if you're playing with a band. Listen to what the band is doing. Listen to how you're playing. Are you complimenting the band? Are you stepping on people's toes? Are you complimenting the vocals, the vocalists? Or are you playing all over them? You know, you're gonna want to play in those spaces. You gotta find those spaces. And if you guys want to understand more about that, go ahead and join my academy at kingsworshipacademy.com. And I really go into depth about this stuff and really teach you um, how you can be a better player as well as you'll be able to join my secret Facebook group and I'll be able to um, instruct you personally from there. You know, I answer questions in the group and everything. And the last step, oops, not your eyes. You want to trust your ears, right? So I remember watching something one time and I was listening and Herbie Hancock was talking. And he was talking about how he used to play with Miles Davis. And he's like, well, you know, I was playing this wrong note. And he said, Miles Davis, I said, I thought it was going to be wrong, but Miles Davis said, well, he said he, he didn't have any judgment towards that. He just kind of went with it. And he and he, uh, he made it sound good because he, he knew what he heard. He trusted his ears. So what am, what am I saying with that? That there can be times when you play things in certain contexts, certain genres, yeah, that they might be wrong. Um, and they might not work, fit in the music. Um, but there might be times where something like that might work, you know, certain music, right? So what am I saying is that there'll be times that you're listening, something will sound right, something will feel right, and you go with it. Then, then there are times something will not sound right, it won't feel right. So a lot of times if you feel that, if you hear that, trust your ears. Your ears are probably telling you something off. For example, let's go back to the song, Bless the Lord, right? If I'm playing Bless the Lord, right, 10,000 reasons, right, and I'm playing... Right, you guys know this is right, right? Uh, nice. Right? But just imagine I did something like this. Like, that's not in the song, right? So something like, whoa, 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 something's not right. Uh, that change is not there. We, 
is every, everybody's not even doing that change. Wait a second, there's a vocalist know you're doing, there's a bass player you know. So your ears might be saying, wait, 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 wait. You know. You gotta be like, so you might have the music director like, whoa, no, no, Jordan, or whoever, you gotta keep that simple. What are you doing? You know, we're not doing that. This this is not for that song. Right? I'm gonna do that again. So this is magical. Right? It doesn't sound bad, but that one I did didn't sound bad, but you know, my ears tell me, wait, 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 that was kind of cool, but I don't know if that works here. You know, we're playing CCM. We got to keep that thing simple. You know, and that goes back to, again, with placement. But let's just say we are playing this song in a jazz style. Right, that might work, we're playing jazz star, right? But here, what I was demonstrating, that we're playing in a CCM. Right, so you want to trust those ears, right? And then there could be some things that are just, I mean, obviously they're just wrong. You know, we could play something like this. Oh my soul, right? Now, now you know that was just wrong. That's just wrong. We're like, okay, my ears are going crazy right now. That that what happened here? Who's playing that? You know? So you want to trust your ears. Your ears are gonna be the ear, your ears are so powerful, you know. Your ears are gonna tell you when something's wrong, when something's right. You can feel it. Um, there'll be things where you can maybe even try to do cool things because you might hear that. You know, so I so guys, you know, trust your ears. Your ears are so important. And you know, your voice, even if you can't sing, normally what you hear in your head, you could duplicate it with your voice, and that's normally gonna be one of your most accurate uh, uh, parts of you that you could use to check. So if I'm saying, da da da, say da da da, so I could check that with my ears, I mean, with my, with, with my mouth, right? Da da da, so I sang it, I sang it, then I played it. So, and it sounded good to my ears, my ears gave me the thumbs up, right? My ears gave me a thumbs up. So you, you're going to want to do that with your playing. So those are the five elements uh, the five elements I use for worship to elevate your words. Again, it's tone, dynamics, tempo, placement. And guys, trust your ears. And don't forget that, that, that really unsaid number one rule, the main rule of 45 is preparation. Preparation, guys. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Practice. Know your instrument. Practice your material, know your material, know your chords, know your changes. If you have chord charts, have your chord charts ready. You know, so those are my five steps for you guys. Guys, I thank you so much. Guys, if this has helped you, please comment below. Let me know how you feel about this. Let me know um, what you got from this. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, any videos you'd like to see me do on certain topics, go ahead and, and send me a comment below. Otherwise, guys, if you want to learn more about uh, elevating worship, more worship piano, you want to learn more how to play in church and or just, just how to be a better musician and how to even um, utilize your gift to, um, to monetize your gift and, and to really um, make a living off of it um, and do well with it, you know, because I'm doing that, I do this full time. Praise the Lord, I thank God. And um, I want you to go ahead and you can join the academy, kingsworshipacademy.com, or you guys can send me an email at jordan at kingsworship.com. That's J-O-R-D-A-N at kingsworship.com. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next one, all right? God bless. Take care, guys.